tired today actually. I have um, been waking up at 6 a.m. between 6 a.m. and 6.30 for the last four days and today is day five and I'm doing really well. I'm succeeding in waking up. I like working out and doing my morning routine and things like that. today this morning i was just doing the girl's hair and if you can tell i've taken out locks in ava's hair and um, we have some new products that i bought just to support her natural hair and also some new deep conditioner for us etc so and i still has her locks i still have my locks i was contemplating on taking them out but they are still here and i'm just kind of working with oh and i took out ariel's locks too so everybody's kind of like half <laughs> Today I was reading in Micah, in chapter 3, when it says, Yet they look for the Lord's support and say, Is the Lord not among us? And it's like, it's funny because how many times do we do this? It's basically saying, come away from idolizing, from sin, from all the things that are not of God. And how many times do we do things, right? And we know we shouldn't be with those people, whatever the case may be. And then we'll be like, oh Lord, please bless us. Or, oh Lord, help me, I'm stuck. Or whatever it is. When you know fully that God didn't call you to do those things. So I just thought that was really funny that we sin or we do certain things and then we want God to co-sign us. So in the scriptures, like, is God not among us? Like, well, no, he's not going to be in parts of things that are not for you or are not what in his will end of my god he does pray for everybody and i thought that was really rich like sometimes we say things and we correct others and we also receive correction but then where's the prayer part where's the ceiling and actually handed it over to god as the source if we're relying on god every single day and we're trying to become more righteous then where is the part that we actually still hand it over to god because we're big and bold sometimes to come and tell somebody something but then are we praying for them <laughs>
so we're getting ready to go out to a Lamar concert. Lamar is touring the UK and if you know Lamar, he is a UK artist from back in the day, um, like maybe 2000s. <clears throat> so if you're in your 30s, 40s, I think 50s, you would know Lamar. Um, yeah, so we're going to his concert, but you know, I'm kind of feeling not bothered. I didn't even want to dress up or anything like that. I just, I'm having that day where you're just like, mm, whatever, I was ready to go in the house clothes even. But I've got on the two piece outfit and this is really cute by the way. It's funny because I actually hate glitter, but here we are with a glitter outfit. My finger is still hurting me. I need to, I'm afraid to take it off. I'm going to come back. I'm going to take, actually, I should change the Paw Patrol um, cluster to a, like, a calm one. Um, when I, I guess I'm gonna have a, ch have a check of it and see if it's okay. But yeah, I am getting ready to pop out now. And you know when the hair's not hair in and the, the vibe, I'm not really feeling like excited or anything. Probably when I get there, I might feel a little better, but anyway. So I got this for my birthday. Thank you, Erica. It smells better than the original one. And I'm trying to figure out what's the difference because this just smells like yummy. Like and the other one smells good, but like there's a little sicky note to it. So I want to see what's been taken out or swapped or added in because this smells really good. I'm also wearing another birthday gift from Shirley. Um, it's the Kiko Hydra lip gloss. after the Lamar concert and my finger is um is healing okay it's healing I'm doing a lot better the pain hasn't like is not increasing or anything like that I've just kind of been monitoring it I need to get some new plasters I don't have any plasters um but however I'm thinking let me just air it out let it dry so that 
it's not getting all sweaty and yucky and stuff but yeah it really was like a good portion of my nail bed is um ripped off anyway good morning today i was spending time in the word as i do um and yesterday i was reading my car and you know i'm using the um that chart that i've put on my community page if you have seen it already i might put it again um basically it just shows the bible verses in i mean the bible chapters from like shortest to longest in a way so i've been using that to kind of get through i have jumped over to the long side a few times because god has led me there but i'm kind of like finishing all the short bits so i had micah yesterday which it said it took 20 minutes to read if you know for me it's not gonna be 20 minutes it's gonna be like an hour or so because i really get into the meanings and the words etc so i finished micah yesterday and i really liked the part as I mentioned about him praying at the end <clears throat> after correcting everybody he still prayed and encouraged them which is really important but today I was reading in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy because they're really really short so I thought well, let me just do that this morning and um, I'll explain to you what my takeaways were so Timothy 1 is about um, false teachers in the church and Timothy 2 is about strengthening um, I would say our loyalty to the Lord, but it's really Timothy's loyalty because Paul wrote the letters. So he was strengthening Timothy's loyalty to the Lord. And he also needed him to come and get him out of prison or to support him in prison because they had imprisoned him. So with Timothy 1, I'm just using my phone because I um, write my notes on um, my spreadsheet. I write my notes on like Word, but I can access it from my phone. So there was something from Timothy. It talks about dressing modestly as women are being decent and stuff like that and then it talks about the way we should be so like our authority basically and we should live peaceful and quiet lives i think it's so important i'm on a journey of peace and just living living comfortably and I just i've had all the years prior where i've been in a chaotic situation and mind frame and stuff like that right now i'm really as i'm getting older like really looking into that peace vibe and just like leaning on god i literally just like wanting to hear from him i wanted to be the woman in christ that i was called to be you know and obviously there's going to be challenges or difficulties or we're going to be like oh what do we do now blah blah blah, blah. but obviously the strength is in is in god so i like the fact that he was uh, mentioning that we should live peacefully and quietly in all the goodness and holiness and this is good and it pleases god right because nobody really wants to be a chaotic have a chaotic life right and then it's talking about women dressing modestly and um and their attitude so now we've all heard like oh if you've you know heard that some women or women shouldn't be at the forefront or at the pulpit or be a pastor etc etc so i've heard this before and i came across this in two in one timothy and I was like, well, what does this mean? Because it says, um, I do not permit, or says, a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. So I was trying to decipher it for myself before I was going deeper. For myself, I said, okay, maybe as we're supposed to be submissive, we're supposed to be, you know, supportive to our husbands or to men in, the, in, in power, etc. right? That we shouldn't overstep uh, the mark. And when I was going deeper, it was saying like, because it's about false teaching or false teachers, at that time, Paul was basically saying that like, the Ephesian women do not know Christ, do not know the word. They are not mature in their faith. So he was telling them to not come and uh, step in a place of authority and start preaching when you don't know anything, which is very wise, right? Because there are many people who probably start talking <laughs> and they don't know what they're talking about and they lead other people the completely wrong way or in a bad situation. So he was saying that because the women at that time were new to the faith and they didn't have maturity and they weren't unable to teach based on the lack of knowledge that he was telling them to be quiet and to learn from the word and let the men at the time who did know what to do, do it. So it wasn't saying that we couldn't teach or preach because I've learned a lot from female pastors and evangelists and so on and so forth. And I also, uh, take a part in teaching and encouraging so i wouldn't say so he's not saying that he's just saying like due to the false teaching at that time women could also come under false teaching if you do anyone can come under false teaching if you do not know the word if you're just reading things out of context and you're being immature in your knowledge and faith so i hope that encourages you because sometimes we want to step and correct somebody 
when we need to be corrected and hold back you know okay so then also it talks about our character as well and it says in the same way women are to be worthy respect not malicious talkers but temper temperate and trustworthy in everything and i was like in everything like you have to be able to be you should be able to have faith in you and rely on you and the character of not being that because we all have friends where <laughs> They're just doing extra stuff and we can't rely on our friends or their backstabbers or whatever the case may be but we're meant to be as women trustworthy in everything that caught me i i want to be trustworthy in everything i want my friends to trust me my family my children and so on so forth i'm able to like go to work or go into a business meeting or whatever it is and to be trusted but that's your character right it's how you present yourself the godliness so those are the things that i i kind of got i got a little bit more but you know and then in my bible it kind of breaks down like the blessings of wealth and the curse and it said the power of wealth is subtle and that's 1 timothy 6 10. i will i'll put this on my community page if i haven't already. yeah i'll put it on my community page it says the source of wealth is security the temptation of wealth is spending the strategy of wealth is saving and the purpose of wealth is sharing and that was from the bible that i had it's called it's called the women's study bible yeah so that was in the bible that i had and it's really good because it oh of course it has scripture and it has like breakdowns i still use the old like ashley's old teaching bible too because that's good <laughs> the old old school stuff are really actually good in like understanding the level of like wording and things like that is to strengthen our uh, loyalty to the lord right so what stood out to me first of all the song that came to me when i was reading the word was um the name of the lord is a strong tower so like the name of the lord is a strong tower the name of the like that song that like, name of the lord is a strong tower and i was like yes lord you are a strong tower like you do cover me you do create that security you're my fortress like i can hide in you i can i can like crouch near you um you block the light uh you know you block things um, you're, you're big enough, you're strong enough, you withstand like the weathers and, the, and all that stuff and I was like yeah you know you are the strong tower in my life and I don't know sometimes God can also speak to you in however way but sometimes he talks to me in a song too if that helps. I just say this to encourage, encourage you as well so then um, let's see what stood out to me it's just lovely scriptures like flee from flee from the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord out of a pure heart um and then don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments right because they produce quarrels and that stood out for me because prior to this and prior before my car um I, would, I saw a video that said, um, you know, the Lord will fight for you, Exodus 14, 14, and he will fight for you. So if someone says something out of turn or uh, if someone accuses you of something, then, um, and obviously, you know, it's not true. Don't get into a, a back and forth situation. You know, it's not true. So don't fall for it. Don't get into arguments, stupid, and that will end up coming going into something bigger and so you know if you've been following for a while or if you've come from to this channel from the uh, mum video the narcissist video um i wish i knew the scripture back then i wish i knew god back then in a way i know him now because honestly it would have saved me so much hassle and time because even though things can go wrong like job even though things can go wrong all around you but if you had that source and if you had the knowledge and know-how and people in your corner or even things that you can watch online that are able to encourage you, half the things, like I'm talking about mindset emotions, probably wouldn't happen. Like right now, getting into an argument with someone who is like that or has like toxic traits or whatever, you can rise above it because you know your worth. When you know your worth, you've done your healing, you've done the work, you've forgiven. When another situation comes up where you get into an argument with someone who has a lawlessness <laughs> uh, you can run back to the scripture and be like i'm not going to get into argument and I'm, i know god will fight for me so in the end he's always going to win so it just reminded me of god's word as i was going for timothy exodus and that video so then in, Tim in timothy it goes on to then say 
Um, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So everything that I've just said before, that's what's good about the word. It's like if you did have an argument or you did have a situation, go to the word. Like now in the time that we are, it's so simple. Like, you can go on your Bible app and just type in the issue anger, lust, whatever it is, and a whole bunch of stuff's going to come up and you can go through the scriptures and then read some in context to deal with the matter. You can go online on Google and literally Google the situation or type in uh, whatever, whatever, and find the word or scripture or, or website. Like, don't be lazy in strengthening your mind in faith because the knowledge is there for a reason to correct you <laughs> and, you know, train you in righteousness. So please don't feel like... A situation may be happening and you're just thinking i can't do anything about it go to the word google it <laughs> but anyway in timothy into timothy it mentioned three women right and obviously my journey of becoming a better woman in christ and a stronger person in christ um there's eunice and there's lois so eunice and lois are timothy's mother and grandmother right and the whole point of timothy of lois and eunice is so that they uh it teaches women to model good faithfulness like godliness towards their children and their grandchildren is to be the uh example right so it was saying like as women we need to know the word and the teachings and to live faithfully in order to teach the younger ones coming up the way of the lord because it says you know uh, teach a child what is it? discipline what is it? It says in the word, teach the teach a child the way and they will not depart from it. Something like that. Um, so that's what that was her that was their role was to teach Timothy from when because he does mention it in like Timothy 3.15 and he says like from no Paul's like from infancy you knew you knew righteousness. And then there was Claudia, who I think she was okay, so her husband was Pudens and her son was Linus. Can't remember the correlation, but I do know that she was like one of the elders. <laughs> In the church basically and her role was to be a faithful encourager of paul and the committee at the time of their congregation so and you do need people like that you need people to be like i got you girl i'm supporting you i'm here for you do this don't do this what about this hey you look good in that da, 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 da. you need to be encouraged sometimes so obviously there's the body of christ etc etc but anyway those are the three women that were mentioned in there and that's what we learned from them so that was my morning take this morning and I made sure to finish them and like really absorb it. I'm going to probably like reread a couple of things and like elaborate and talk and like obviously when you read something and it connects to your heart, you should spend time in it, meditate on the word so that it can encourage and strengthen you and like choose some scriptures where you can memorize as well so that you can carry those through other ways. So if you know you're with someone who's always arguing or around people who are always, I mean, if you're around people who are negative and arguing, you need to exit. However, if you are dealing with situations, maybe at work or whatever, find scriptures that you can pray before going into your meeting pray before having to communicate with other people because sometimes some people are family or some people are really close circles and you can't automatically let them go but you can have scripture you can put on your armor you know what i mean so that as you tackle certain things you recovered strengthened and you can go forth in peace <laughs>
I'm just going to make some fish for dinner, some salmon, I'm going to season it up. I can't even do much because my finger is absolutely hurting. So I'm going to end the vlog here. I'm going to season this up with some oven and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.